Allahu Akbar. Welcome to our audience that is viewing from home during this lockdown. Um, my name is Kashmir Maryam and this is my sister Aisha. Aisha, would you like to introduce yourself and what we do as the Strangers Organization? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, my name is Aisha and I am part of an organization called The Strangers and our goal is to revive the message of Islam and we do this through uh, different different means. One of the means is through spoken word poetry, through the collective voice of Muslim poets around the world um, and just being able to clear up misconceptions. So that's our main goal. Um, yes, Kashmir. Yeah, excellent. Jazakallah khair. Uh, so... The work that we do as the strangers is we host a lot of uh, poetry slams. A lot of the time they're, um, you know, in person. And so we have our poets go up on stage. They compete for trophies um, and prizes. And we just have a good time. It's basically to platform the Muslim voice so that we can portray the true message of Islam through the art of spoken word poetry. Um, so it's a creative yes. art. It's something that is uh, powerful and empowering. Um, and that's what we wanted to do for you today. So we have a great show lined up for you all. Um, we hope that you enjoy watching. Um, and I just wanted to clarify a few things that are a little bit different about uh, slam poetry uh, versus written poetry or any other type of poetry, Shakespeare, whatever you, whatever type of poetry you are into. Um, so the difference between slam poetry is that it is um, about the content of the poem. So how deep is the lyrical content? how um how relevant is it to the audience how how powerful is the 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 methods that are used to articulate what is being said in the poem and second of all um the the powerful thing about slam poetry and probably one of the more important traits of slam poetry is that it is heavily about the way in which the message is revealed to the audience so it's not just about reading from a sheet of paper it's about how that message is delivered um, so that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on as the strangers and we do uh, with all of our poets as well. So inshallah today you'll be hearing some slam poetry and um, I hope that you enjoy the show and all of the poets that we have lined up. Uh, there are three simple rules that we have for the poets. That is number one, the content has to be um, appropriate. So no curse words. Um, uh, there, there is no inappropriate content um, and our poets do understand that. The second rule is that uh, we have to make sure that the poem is under five minutes. Um, and number three is just to be respectful of everyone that is up there performing. Everyone is sharing something that is meaningful to them. And that's something very personal. And we have to respect that because that's very sanctified. Um, so, yeah. So, without any further ado, I would like to introduce our judge for this evening. Her name is Tahani Salah. Is Tahani there? I'm here. Assalamu As alaikum, Tahani. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, we're doing good. Perfect. So I have, Tahani, your bio here. I'm just going to read it. And um, hopefully that will explain to everyone your background in poetry. I personally, I know Tahani from before. Um, she's a slam poet. So she knows a thing or two, or more than a thing or two, about performance. And that's one of the reasons we chose to have her on our platform today. Um, and that's something that means a lot to us because I think to be a writer is one thing, but to be a performer is something, um, is something else. So, uh, Jazakallah her for joining us today. Thank so, you. Tahani Salah is an educator, poet, and activist based in Brooklyn, New York, with a bloodline to Palestine. She's a graduate of Columbia University, a former professor of curriculum development at the Cooney Graduate Center. She's also a member of the New York Slam team. She competed internationally and holds many slam titles from Europe to Africa. Tahani has also been featured on HBO's Death Poetry Jam. She is a passionate about peace and activism and carries that into the classroom as an educator, showing how life creates art and using it all as a tool of expression. As an artist dedicated to bringing light and solutions to communities where people's voices have been silenced, Tahani has performed at a number of world-famous stages, including the Apollo Theatre in New York City, to universities in the U.S., South Africa, Germany, Canada, Palestine, Jordan, and many more. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, so Tahani, you told me to pick one or two lines from your bio, but I felt like everyone needed to hear that. Okay. Um, so welcome. Okay. So next we will have Sister Sukaina. Is Sister Sukaina here? 
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Sister Sakina, how are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you. Um, where are my manners, right? I don't think I've asked anyone how they are. We were asking off, off stage, so it's okay. Alhamdulillah, please introduce yourself and the stage is yours. Okay, so can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Um, alaikum. My name is Sakena. I am a second year college student from Dallas, Texas, and I am a mental health advocate. And I want to promote a message from my own life about how important it is that we show kindness to ourselves and to those whom we love today, every day, and for the rest of our days, inshallah, and especially in these difficult times. So, inshallah, I'm going to begin now. Before our arrival into this world, every single soul was gathered and asked to testify, Surely you are our Lord. It was the original covenant with the Most Divine. He sent the Quran to promise and promise to those seeking peace, Inna ma'an usri yusra. Verily, with hardship comes ease. And that is why everybody is worthy, worthy of love, friendship, and to feel happy. However, I know for a fact that those blessings certainly do not apply to me. Those nights when I'm hurting, my past haunting me, my future terrifying me, I often find myself begging, Allah, can you please let me know, why did you invent me? These nights are so eerie that I'm able to hear my arrhythmic love dubs beneath my punctured lungs caused by the shards of my broken heart piercing right through me. Your concerns, tears can only tell me, well, I know this girl, she smiles so much, I'm sure she's happy. Everybody's depressed these days, this poem is probably just about her story. I really don't mean to bum everyone out, I just want to share what happened one day in psychology. In class, I filled out a survey, they asked about me, wanted to know who I was and what interested me, didn't care too much and well, I made a mistake and I real answered honestly. Days later, Ding came an email, said it was an emergency, said Miss Stein needed to see me. I sat in her office in her waiting room, freaking out. Maybe it's because I turned in my quiz too quickly. Soon came a middle-aged lady. Her kind of smile, her voice was sweet. We both sat down in our seats. Thank you for coming in, Sakena. I have learned you want to kill yourself. You need to call immediately the Center for Mental Health. In this moment, it seemed as if the world had stopped spinning, hurling me into orbit. My, I felt dizzy, my heart sank, just like the night sky. My mind went to its dark place, barely grasping onto reality. I thought, this was it, huh? Somebody had finally figured out I was crazy. My voice became a shaky quiver, similar to right now. I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, you just caught me off guard. Nobody has ever said any of my thoughts out loud. It's okay now. When do you plan on doing it? Have you attempted before? How do you plan on doing it? Please tell me if there's more. I'm, I'm giving myself four years, yes, and I'm not sure. I haven't completely thought it through. All I know is that it's something I intend to do. So, Kane, I think it's been a long time since you realized these thoughts aren't healthy and they shouldn't be romanticized. But Miss Stein, as I began to cry, my parents, they love me. I wouldn't know what to do if they found out I'm really just a shell of what used to be their little Suki. They don't know my past and they can't know it now. My parents, they sent me to school to learn. I can't cause them any burden. I can't have them worried with concern. So, Kena, be patient. Tell me what's wrong. You are not alone. I fear my soul has turned to stone. With each tear, I fell a sickening regret. Struggling for good air, I counted my good deeds, realizing I barely had anything left. Three hours went by. As Miss Stein listened to me cry, she indicated trauma, depression, and stress. <sighs> Basically, we came to the realization that my life was a mess. She so kindly explained that it will take time for my hurt to heal. She said that when I'm ready, I will visit every week and we'll discuss what I feel. And in this moment, I realized that my Rob hadn't completely given up on me, as I thought funny how my name literally means tranquility. For the first time in a long time, I finally felt at peace. To my dear brothers and sisters, please consider this as an intervention. It is finally my time to talk about suicide prevention. I am standing here before you having gone through eight years of my mind tormenting me, and for the first time, I'm happy. I'm so shy, I wouldn't normally dare go on stage, but I am tired of all the well-meaning suggestions of just pray more, read more Quran, make dua, and you'll be okay. You do not have to suffer in silence. The Prophet, peace upon him, even said, take advantage of your health before your illness. I only stand here today because I am tired, and I condemn the stigma, and I condemn the shame, and I understand your worry, and I understand your pain. It has been one year since my meeting with Miss Stein, and it is a conversation that will never ever leave my mind, and that is why when I went home over the break, I hugged my parents and I made them cry. I sat down on the sofa and said with all the courage I had mustered in me, Ami and Abu, I want you to know I am going to therapy. Thank you.
Wow, wow, wow. Where do I begin? Pamela, you blew me away, Sakina. I, I, I really wanted to speak when you submitted and I just thought we needed someone to speak to because mental health has such a stigma in our community and I think that people are only now beginning to understand and appreciate it, you know? So, Mel Laurel, mm -hmm. thank you for shedding light on that and for sharing your own personal um, experiences. It takes a lot of courage um and keep shining keep mm. sharing that message mail or would you is that okay thank you so much. i mean much for sharing sister that was a deeply beautiful personal poem sister tahani i'm sorry again no, I, <laughs> i'm I, gonna say I, something i think i have a delay on my side so i jump in it's okay uh, <laughs> okay. I, it's a phenomenal topic for you to pick it's something that's uh, very touching and uh, it's very relevant Subhanallah, we have a, um, we have a, 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 I don't want to call it an epidemic, but it, it is a, a situation where there are a lot of young people that don't have vices to express what they're going through. The challenges of, um, t you know, the test and the trials and tribulations Allah puts uh, um, in front of us and how we go about, uh, you know, taking them on. But um, that is, it's very important for us. And there's such a stigma behind mental health in, in the Islamic and uh, Middle Eastern, South Asian communities. Uh, we, we, we don't necessarily think it's something, and you said it in your poem, pray more, read more. And, um, you know, I've had many young people come to me and confide in me and ask me what to do. And always, subhanAllah, it, it is the first thing that comes to your mind. Read more, pray more. Allah's always there because you know, that's the purest of, of our hearts. And um, it is a, a stigma. And I'm very, very proud of you that you are going into a field that, um, mashallah, it, it is a, a very heavy thing to carry. But inshallah, you'll help a lot of people. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank primarily for hosting us on their platform every single year when we host this it's just an amazing success and i can say alhamdulillah from the bottom of my heart i think this was phenomenally successful so jazakallah khair i want to say a special jazakallah khair to uh tahani for doing this for doing the very very difficult job of judging it can never be thank you so much and may allah reward you and um you. and uh, you know for taking the time out you're also a mother so you know it, i know it's difficult juggling uh duty so for that and um, yeah do you have any closing remarks Aisha um, I just wanted to say that um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of the viewers for attending um, I pray that we all benefited in an event without our poets um, now saying that as well um, I'm not sure if you can see me okay you can see me now um, no further ado uh, you can find the strangers on instagram our website is in the works inshallah so please do uh, definitely follow up with more information about the Uyghur campaign uh, which is a current campaign that we're doing we hope you enjoyed the letter the final compilation um a lot of heart went into it from our poets and thank you again to everyone and of course assisted tahani you did an amazing job assalamu alaikum and lastly i just want to say the greatest thank you to all of our poets for contributing their pieces each one was mind-blowing and touched my heart and i'm sincerely saying that as someone who's been to a lot of poetry slams and a lot of poetry over the years as tahani and as aisha can both attest to we heard an amazing level of talent tonight um so may Allah reward you all and yeah i'm gonna close it right there and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh